Are you the kind of guitarist that wants to use a real 100 watt or 50 watt tube head and you want to record with it or use it live but you're just not able to make all that noise for whatever reason? Well, we've got something to show you. This is the Two Notes Captor, and this is a fantastic little piece of kit. They come in three varieties, 4 ohm, 8 ohm, or 16 ohm. And you choose which one you want to suit the amp that you have the best. They're a relatively inexpensive little device. They're, I think it's 220 euros, so, you know, 200, 250 pounds, uh, maybe 300 dollars at a guess. Uh, and that might sound like a lot of money, but compared to the price of the all valve head that I'm going to run into it, it's a lot less comparatively. Now, what this box does is it takes up to 100 watts of tube amp load and takes that and just absorbs it essentially in an electrically safe kind of way so that you can then run that amp silently and your amp won't go bang because it is not safe to run a 100 watt amp uh, without a speaker load attached to it unless it's one of the very special kind of rare designs that are made to do that but if you don't know if your amp's capable of doing that chances are it's not in this case i'm using a marshall jcm 2000 tsl 100 which belongs to my dad at the moment so i have made use of it while it's here and it sounds like this <laughs> Now, what I'm doing is there is a switch on the captor for a speaker simulator. It can be guitar, bass, or off. Uh, so I'm using the guitar mode right now. So this is what it sounds like with the crunch channel on this uh, TSL with the inbuilt guitar speaker simulator. Sounds like this. <laughs> Now, if I turn that off, it's not going to sound very pretty. It's going to sound like this. Because that's what a guitar amp sounds like without the speaker cabinet attached. That's how they sound. And then the speakers in the cabinet soften off the top and the cabinet does its wonderful magic. So the best way to do this is either to use the guitar simulation or... Record if you're recording this you can use two notes wall of sound software and that looks like if I can Bring it up looks like this So I've gone and loaded my uh, Big beast into here, which is my Zilla 4x12 cabinet with vintage 30s in and that if I turn that on with the Speaker sim in the captor turned off that sounds like this Time for a quick tuning break. Be right back. Now with the wall of sound software, I can choose different microphones, different cabinets, uh, different spaces to put them in while still using the real tube head. So if you've got a particular head that you just absolutely must insist on using, which a lot of guitarists do, I would suggest doing this method because then you can keep recording into the night and not wake the baby, so to speak, or, you know, upset whoever would be upset by it. Now, something to note if you've never used a load box before is that there is a little bit of noise that they make. They're not entirely silent. Now, if I hit a chord really loud, uh, you'd hear two things. Firstly, you would hear the head fizzing a little bit, and that's the output tubes and the transformer singing, as I like to call it. You would never hear that when you've got a speaker attached to a 100-watt load because that's so much louder than the transformer. 
that you probably never have known that was a thing. And also, there is a fan inside the captor which only activates when the amp gets really, really hot. Wait, that's not quite right. It activates when the amp gets really loud, because when the amp gets loud, the load box, the captor, has to absorb all that power, and that turns into heat. So to stop the thing from melting, there's a little fan in there. So every time I hit a chord, it, the fan goes a little bit. It's not really loud, but if you're working on headphones and you take the headphones off and play a chord, it might be noticeable. So I'll cut the camera now and I'll put the microphone right up next to it. And you'll hear when I strike a guitar chord what it sounds like, but it's really not loud. I mean, compared to a, a 4x12 cabinet blasting away, it's tiny, tiny minuscule. It's like you can't hear it in the next room loud. And as you heard there, it spins down the fan as soon as you stop playing those loud chords. So, I mean, it really depends on what you're doing. But uh, it's got an XLR out on the captor, which I'm currently running into my interface. And it's also got a dry line out on a jack, which can go to a cabinet modeling hardware, like the Torpedo Cab, which is essentially the hardware version of the Wall of Sound plugin. So you could take this and the Captor and you could go on tour with your guitar sounds. But that's another video for another day. Uh, the other thing is that on the back of the Torpedo Captor, um, I've plugged the amp into the input on it, obviously, but there are also options to plug your speaker cabinet into it and use it as a pass-through. So you're just using this kind of as like either a recording device or you're using it to send a signal out to a front of house guy. So he's not having to put a microphone in front of your amp, which means that there's nothing to knock. There's no bleed, which means that the sound on front of house will be much clearer than it's ever been. And the other option is that there's a jack next to it, which says minus 20 dB, and that's an attenuator. So that takes some of the volume off that massive cabinet sound. So let's say you're playing a gig and there's a sound limiter and you like your tube amp to be really kind of cranked. So what you can do is you can still crank it to a reasonable degree, uh, use the minus 20 dB output to your speaker cabinet to take quite a lot of volume off that and also use the XLR output to front of house so it can be recorded, it can be put through uh, and not necessarily flood the stage with way too much sound which can be a problem that you'll run into a lot. So this has a lot of fixes for that and some for something that's not very expensive I really can't recommend it enough. And I have bought this from Two Notes. This is not given to me for free. This is something that I've gone out of my way to get. Um, a lot of the time now, I'll probably be using this in situations where, let's say I'm tracking drums. I don't want a guitar amp blasting away in the same room as the drummer. I want a clean drum sound. But the guitarist might want to still use his head and his settings. So what we do is we would plug him into the captor, take a feed of that out, to the, the desk so he can hear himself on his headphones and then he's happy enough, uh, the drummer can hear what he's doing, uh, the live room doesn't get filled with that massive guitar sound and then maybe afterwards when the drums are tracked all we do is we plug the guitar cabinet back in to the head or maybe even through the captor and we're back in business recording real cabs. There are so many possibilities with this and that's just one piece of gear. So, another thing I'm going to talk about in future is removing the amp entirely with uh, replacing it with preamp pedals, which is a relatively new kind of format, uh, and then maybe running them into the Torpedo Cab, which has power amp emulation. I mean, it's not exactly the same. That's why some people want to use their tube amps. I mean, that's why I'm showing you this right now. But if you need a lighter, smaller setup, there are answers to that as well. So that's something we're going to look at in a future video. Anyway, I'm going to keep this relatively short, so that's all from me for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Adam Steele for the Hot Pole Studios, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.
Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here, or check out our Facebook and Twitter, or our Patreon page which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.